Hey folks, it's the Wizard of Wizard of Mo Games. Today we're at the Wizard's Table and we're going to dive into Iron Helm. Uh, this is a game um, done by Jason Glover of Grey Gnome Games. Um, he's got many games under his belt. Uh, I watched several videos on uh, the Dungeon Dive and uh, Game Night, K N I G H T. Uh, apparently, they love Iron Helm and uh, this begat several micro games, little tin games of Ten Helm and Ten Realm. And uh, as Jason continued to make products, he came up with improvements on how to do things. And one of them was the character creation. So I'm going to go ahead and move this. I've got a stack of tokens here, but we're not going to do anything with these until we create our character. So normally what you would do, I've got a uh, a promo character here and uh, you can look at him. He's got health, energy, encumbrance, um, food, and gold. So those are his starting stats. Um, another thing it shows his trappings and this is basically starting gear. There's a whole deck of starting gear here. And then he also has his skill, and there's a whole deck of skill cards. And then down on the bottom, he has his, uh, basically his character type. There is brawn, agility, and mind. So you're looking at muscles, you're looking at speed, and you're looking at uh, magic user's intellect. Um, so this is, this is uh, how the characters came. They had a little character written on the back and there's a stack of them i mean a big old stack of them so what he did once he carried on the legacy of this game and busted down to these little tin size games which i went ahead and got all of those as well i got these play mats for this game i got the play mat for tin realm and i can play tin helm and tin realm on it uh, i bought gates and gate which is a tower defense game but i just I'm addicted to this stuff. <laughs> it, it's so fun. It is classic dungeon crawl. Now, I'm not as good as dungeon dive and game night on this, but uh, this is actually my first time playing it. So, but what I wanted to do is show you how the characters were originally done and then update and show you what they are like now. So, I bought this thing called a gnome pack. And it was a gray, gray gnome games uh, packet that had promo cards and new content for all kind for Dust Runner and Ten Realm and Ten Helm and uh, uh, just several of his games. And in that pack, he released a whole new set of characters based upon. The method of character creation he used in those smaller games and how it works on these characters there's only a few of the stats and there are racial racial abilities so the wood elf starts with a certain set of stats and you would dig through here and say well do I want the wood elf the merfolk the human the half folk uh, the crawling which is some sort of lizard or bird type guy um, looks like a bird, a dwarf, a half-orc, half-orc, look at that. Let's go for the half-orc. So what you would do is pick your character, and then on the back of all these other guys is a bunch of classes. And once you pick your race, then you dig through and you pick your class. So once you pick that up, You'll put that together, and what this will do is going to go ahead and give you a combination of the health based on the class and the character race, so you would add them up. So 12 base for the half-orc with 6, I picked the Nomad. So he's going to be a Nomad. So he would get 18 health, which I know to be the maximum number. I'm going to take this and move it over here. He will never be able to have more than 18 health. I'm sure that he'll have far less than that throughout the game, but that is his maximum. Now, if he didn't use every single token in the game, 
um, let's say he was only at 11 health, the rest of these would just be removed. He will never have more than that. And as he takes damage, he moves them over to the side here, and as he gains health back, he'll stack them back up. So you'll always have the ability to see where he is. Well, another thing that came in this pack was a bunch of cards where people who don't have the play mats, because you can lay this out and play it just flat out on the table. By the way, there's a Mage Knight map behind it here. Um, you can set it up, and he gave cards that had little trackers. So you could track your gold and your poison and your food and your, your energy and your health. That came with it because so many people said, hey, we want that because in the small games, there were little trackers for that stuff. So, um, moving on here. So I have 18 health. Then I look at my energy. Now, what energy is used for is these little purple tokens here. Energy is going to be spent to roll dice. That's part of combat and uh, skill checks. So he starts with 11 energy. Now there are ways to get energy back in the game, but you have to conserve it because if you have no energy, all you can do is a punch for a single point of damage. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of that energy off because he will never be able to have more energy than that. He can lose energy, he can gain energy, but he is maxed out. And now what I'll do, his encumbrance is 11. So in your trapping items and your loot and potion cards, they're going to have an encumbrance rating. Oh, that's what I meant to say on, uh, on the standard character. It tells you, hey, you get a trapping, it's a mace. Okay, you would just go grab the mace, a single item, and he had a skill, divinity, okay, and he was a brawn guy. And he would just start off with these and play the game. That's how it was. Um, but with this method of picking your race, picking your class, he also added one other item. And these are star signs. And there are six of these cards. Everything he does is two-sided. So you would pan through these and dig around until you found something. Look through them if you want, or you can just randomize it, flip them over, do this and another. But let's pick of the spider. So half orc nomad of the spider. This is going to give you all the stuff that was printed on that card, but you're going to get choices now. Instead of saying you get the mace and you get this, you get that. So with the half orc, I've already set up his health. I've set up his energy. I'll know his encumbrance because he's going to sit here in the character slot. But it says he has a racial ability. He may avoid combat with orcs, grunkles, and goblins. So, okay, cool. He's got a racial ability. So let's put him up there. So let's go look at his class. Well, his class gives him his additional health, gives him his additional energy, and he starts with no food. So he's going to have to find some food because as you go through this dungeon, when you go through one level of it, you're going to advance to the next level and so forth, going through the dungeon, which will incrementally increase the health of the enemies and make them tougher. Um, so even if you see you know, a goblin on level one, He's not going to be the same goblin that you see on level 5 because that guy's going to have a whole lot more health and be a lot harder to take care of. But you're supposed to level 2. You know, he's, he's like me. He believes you need to use your potions and use your loot in order to survive because that's the whole point of this is survive through to the end and get to the boss. And the way that works are plot cards. So at the end of each level of the dungeon, before you shuffle this deck back up and put it over here, you're going to draw a plot card and you're going to resolve it. And some of these will have choices. And some of those choices are going to um, allow you to gain really cool items or um, 
have choices on helping people or not helping people and, and gaining reputation or losing reputation on the track. Um, it's morality is what it is. And the morality it, throughout the dungeon, there are certain things that will reward you based upon where you are on the morality or hurt you based upon where you are on the morality track. So that puts another aspect into it to where you, am I going to pay for making bad choices? Or if I do the right thing, it's going to hurt, just like real life. So um, you'll start off in the middle. However, when I drew this of the spider, what this did, instead of saying, you're a brawn guy, half orc, you should be brawn. Nope, I will be agility. Oh, cool. So I'm a half orc nomad with agility? Cool. But I lose two morality because I'm of the spider. So I'm already starting two in the hole there. But this card, the class, is going to allow you to choose from a set of skills. Dual wield, berserk, dodge, or fortitude. Now, I think some of these are actually in these... Um, they have adventure packs. There's seven adventure packs. And what you do is remove certain cards from the deck and then shuffle those cards into it, and it changes things. And then you would pull those cards out and go to Adventure Pack 2, and they have skill levels on them, dungeon levels. So you start with the base game, level 1, remove a few of these chintzy creature stuff, and then slide in these other creatures and loot and potions and, and play it that way. So there's so much variety in it, so many characters, so many things. Um, those Adventure Packs and add-ons add henchmen, um, afflictions, artifacts, just all kinds of stuff. Right now I'm working on base, anything that was designed to go in the base game. Even went so far as to create a separate dungeon that is completely different than this one. It's a blue-backed deck. So if you went through the countless combinations of characters and cards, I think he said there was 162 combinations, um, then you could just switch the dungeon and now you get to do it all again. So I think that's really cool. So this is going to allow me, you know, go through these skills and dig through and pick one of those. So I think some of the skills might not be in here because they're part of adventure packs. But I think dual wield sounds really cool. I can equip a dagger in my offhand, getting plus two to the sum of my attack rolls. That's really cool. That's a skill. So just like any dungeon crawl, you have a head item, a primary hand, an off hand, a body, and accessories. And all of these will have an encumbrance rating on them. And uh, you're in a video game, you pick up everything, and then your next step is, what do I got to drop? And you start looking at the value of the items, or how much damage it can do, or how it can help your character, and the ones that aren't so helpful, or cost the less, least amount of money, and you dump them. Well, you can do that with this. If you get to your encumbrance and you find loot or a potion that's really cool, you can pitch something. Um, you can also carry stuff around as long as you haven't reached that encumbrance and swap them out in between rooms of the dungeon. So it's like, you know, I've been seeing a lot of ice creatures in here. Let me switch to the fire weapon. And you can do things like that. So... I'm going to go with dual wield, adding a dagger. Of course, I have to find that dagger, or I can find a merchant and spend gold to buy it. Um, according to this, I start with no gold and no food, basically. I'm super strong. I've got some energy, but no gold, no food. So I'm just going to stick this nomad, who is on the back of the gnome card, by the way. So the, the class that's on the back of the character of the race can never be. So you'll never see the Gnome Nomad, but again, there's six of them, so the combinations are great. So we'll go in with this Nomad under the Half-Orc. The Half-Orc has the Necromancer on the back of him. Let's move that. And then of the Spider says that I am an agility character, and I get to pick a starting trapping out of Circlet, Dwarven Blade, or I can just get two gold. Well, I have no gold, but I know that I can find it in the dungeon or sometimes when I defeat enemies. And um, I don't think the Dwarven Blade is in the base cards. 
I think it's in one of these others. So I'm just going to dig and find the circlet and let's see what it does. And I'm going to put this of the spider just up here to show that I am an agility character. So let's look through here. Mace, ropes, wooden staff, axe, dagger. There's the dagger. That cost two gold. I'll put it on top. Leather armor. And these you don't have to shuffle up because you're always digging through them. So circlet was the item I was looking for. I went ahead and found it. And let's see what it does. It's a headpiece. Has one encumbrance. Looks like it's the only thing I'm carrying. Gain an additional two health when you drink a health potion. Well, great. I've got a ton of health. I'm sure I'm going to take a lot of damage, especially since I don't have a weapon and I don't have any armor. But... Drinking a potion and getting plus two health, that's really cool. If I can find the dagger, I'll be doing plus two on my damage. So that's cool, too. So that is character creation in a nutshell. Race, class, trappings, and skill. Now, you'll be able to get more items. You'll get loot. If you go to a merchant, uh, there's ways you can buy more trappings, I think, um, um, I'm not sure how it works. I'd have to look into it. Uh, leave a comment if you know. And uh, But the way you level up and gain more skills is by how many enemies you defeat. So if you defeat one, you set him aside here face up. Um, when you defeat three enemies, you have the ability to level up and purchase a skill that is of your skill type, Agility. Well, you may look through there and say, eh, I really don't want any of these agility skills. Oh, I wish I had that brawn skill. That'd be really nice. Well, if you wanted to do that, you would have to hold off and wait until you defeated five enemies. And if you defeat five enemies, you have enough experience points to cross your class, uh, whatever it is, you could go out of agility and go into brawn or mind. You flip those over because what's going to happen at the end, when you reach the boss, either through plots or the end of the fifth level of the dungeon, the plots have little eyeballs on them. And the more of these that show up, the more chance the boss has to see you. So if you get 10 of these eyeballs, you're going to be fighting the boss anyway. Um, so the, the plots is, is how that boss is going to come up. But the boss that you face is going to be based upon how many monsters of that particular type you fought. Because that's the one you're going to garner the attention of. So what we have is the undead lich. You have the lurker, who's the frost guy. And then you have the naga, who's the fire one. So if you do more fire people, then you're going to face the Naga. And uh, so that's how that works. <coughs> so there's three different bosses here, but every one of the adventure packs has bosses in it as well. So again, the variety in this game is great. Um, you're going to have three six-sided dice, and you got two 12s. All these 12s are, it's just going to show you the health because, <coughs> excuse me, there will be health on an enemy. We'll pull this guy. And you'll always add the dungeon level. So this guy has one health. With the dungeon level, he has two. Great. But if I was running into him on level five, now he's sitting at six. So that's what you're going after. Uh, the second stat on this card is how much initial damage he gets. And this is what he adds to his roll. So how a monster does it is simple. Two dice. You roll them, and you take the difference. Six to three is three. And then you add that to it. Nothing. So he does three damage. Roll it up. What do you got? Five and four? One. Plus nothing is one. However, if at any time they roll doubles, it's considered a miss. It doesn't matter how much additional bonus damage is on the card. A doubles is a miss. Close call. The third little icon here is how much <coughs> is how much loot they're carrying. So if there's a zero, there's nada. However, there is a little gold coin here. If I defeat him, I get a gold coin regardless. One means you can choose a gold coin or a loot guard. 
Two means you get a loot and a potion. Of course, you can reveal them and look at them. And if you're not over encumbered, go ahead and put them in your inventory. Um, but if it's a primary hand and you've already got one, you're going to have to swap out. You can only carry one primary and one offhand. But that's how he works. And uh, he has a special on the bottom that says... When the skinkling successfully hits, gain a poison token. So, here's the poison tokens. Really neat on how poison works in this game. It works the same way in the Ten Realm and Ten Helm. You'll stack it up here. And at the end of the dungeon, for every two poison you have, you'll gain another one. So if you got one, you're good. But if you had two, you're going to gain another. So what is poison going to do? Is it going to slow you down? No. You look at your health stack. If your health stack ever reaches the same height as a poison stack, you die. So as poison goes up and health goes down, if ever they meet each other, sorry, you just succumbed to the poison. So there are cards and potions and things in here that can help take that poison away. Really cool. Really cool mechanic. Um, this is gold coins. This is your food, the rations. So at the end of each level of the dungeon, you have to spend a ration. You have to feed yourself. If not, you lose three health. There's also cards in here that are going to take health away if you don't eat. So if you get stuck in the labyrinth and don't eat while you're in there, you're going to lose health. So you got to try to gain food when you can. These cards are going to give you choices. I'll show you how that works here in a minute. These are blessings. These can be gained. They can also be taken away by enemies. Blessings are boosts to your health or to your energy at the boss fight. So you collect these. They're face down. You don't know what they are. They're all shuffled up. And then when you go to the boss, you flip them over and it's like, ooh, gain health or ooh, get extra energy or ooh, lose your poison or whatever it may be. They can help you out. So... It's good to get blessings, but sometimes you got to decide, do I want the blessing, do I want the food, or do I want to gain some health or lose some poison? Choices, that's what it's all about. Um, different when the character attacks. Now, I'm going to put him back up because I have an ability that lets me avoid combat with him. So I'm just going to leave him there and we'll skip over him when the time comes. Um, for the character... You have to spend energy to roll a die. Um, if you have no energy, you get to punch for one point and hope that they only have one point left. But you spend an energy, you get a die, and you can do that up to three. And you don't get to take the difference. You roll it, and you total it all up, plus any weapon bonuses or anything like that that help you. Um, sometimes you can drink potions. They'll tell you to roll two dice and add these to a six or something, but your dice is all totaled up. It's not a doubles is a miss. In 10 Helm, I think it is, but not in this one. This is the granddaddy of them. And I'm looking forward to Underquest, which is one he's working on now, another dungeon crawl. All right, so with my character being set up, I have two less morality. I'm in level one, and now this is the meat of how it works. You've got this deck of cards that you have shuffled, and this is the dungeon. There are rooms in this dungeon, and every time you come to a door, there are two, and you get to choose which way you go. So, if you, you reveal one, I'll do it now. Boom. This is a skirmish. I would resolve the top action on this card. This one says, draw an enemy card and add the current dungeon level and plus two to their health. And then you would fight them. But you can say, you know, I'm not in the mood to skirmish. I want to look for a weapon. I'm going to have to gain some loot to do it. Uh, I don't think I want to fight. So what I'm going to do is press my luck. Discard pile is always face down on this side. Now I press my luck, I'm going to reveal this card. And when I do, I will resolve the bottom half of this card. So this could be exponentially better than the top, 
are exponentially worse than what the top was on this card. So let's reveal it and see what we have. Look at that. Another skirmish. Oh boy. So instead of going into combat and fighting an enemy with plus two to their health, draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level and plus four to their health. So that's what I'll do. I'll draw the enemy. He has one plus the dungeon level is two plus four. This guy has six health. What do you know? Six health. He has no initial bonus to his damage. He would give one loot if I defeated him. And he is um, weak to fire. He's a fire type creature, I guess. And when he successfully hits you, you gain a poison token. Oh, that's not good. Nobody wants poison right away. So let's take a look at this half-orc. This guy might be brethren. May avoid combat with orcs, grunkles, and goblins. Is he a grunkle? No, he's a skinkling. Ah, so I'm going to have to fight him. Well, here we go. This is how it works. So he starts with six health. He's going to attack first. The only way I can attack them first is on an ambush. So we're going to roll. So he got a three and a two. The difference is one plus zero. He hit me for one point of damage. Okay, I'll take that. We'll take this. And I put this health over here on the right side. That's what I've lost. I can only ever gain that back. But it's also shortening that stack, so I will see it if poison comes. So, it is my turn to retaliate. For me, I'm going to have to spend energy. So, if I spend two, I can sort of press my luck and hope that I get a six or better to take him out. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend two of these, and we're going to put them here in this area, and I can recover them if needed. So, I'm going to roll two. Look at that. Eight points of damage will take him out with the six. So there he is. Um, he did hit me, so I did gain a poison token, because he did successfully hit me once. And I do defeat him, so I'm going to set him aside, because he's going to be what I need to level up and gain more skills. It's a level one loot. I get a gold coin for defeating him. He had some in his pocket. Thanks. Little skinkling, I thought I was going to be able to avoid you, but I misread my card. So I will grab a loot card, and this loot is an undeath potion. Discard to destroy any undead foe with five or less base health, or discard to make any enemy weak to undead attacks. Now I believe if they are weak to particular attacks, that it does double damage to them, but I would have to check that. So this is a potion encumbrance once, so I have two. Great. That is resolved. That was one room in the dungeon. I took a guy out. So let's carry on and see where else we can go. We're going to pull two more up. Which door do I choose? I think I will choose this one. The Labyrinth. Well, what do you know? Discard one ration. If you have no rations, lose three health. Well, you know, I'm going to have to press my luck. I don't want to lose three health just for walking around. And this might be a better card, or it could be another skirmish. Let's see. Boom. It's not. It's a clearing. So this is the second way to get plot cards. At the end of each dungeon level, and when you hit the clearing, you're going to draw and resolve a plot card. So this plot card says, The Shrine. In the clearing, you find a towering shrine covered in vegetation. You're overwhelmed by a sense of power just as a gentle breeze rushes past you. Gain blessing tokens equal to your position on the morality track. Well, guess what? I'm at minus two. I get jack. I get nothing because I'm of the spider. But there are three eyeballs on the bottom of this card, which means the boss is that much closer to seeing me. When I hit the 10th eyeball, I gotta fight the boss. So there's some eyeballs sitting there, just waiting, watching. <clears throat> there we go. So now 
We'll pull two more of these and decide which way we want to go. Let's go this direction. An ambush. Okay, so an ambush on the first choice is good for you. But if you go past it and go to an ambush, the second choice is not good for you. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use it. And basically, draw an enemy card and ignore their initial damage. And then add the dungeon level to their health. So they don't get to attack first, you're attacking first. So let's see what we have. We have a flying snake. He has three health plus the dungeon level. So he's going to go to four health. His initial damage is one, which I think he, you roll and attack with it. He has no treasure. And he's got the frost type. You gain one poison with initial damage. Oh, but it's an ambush. I'm ignoring initial damage. Good. So I need to take this guy out. I'm going to go ahead and spend two energy to roll two dice. And I should be able to rack a four on this. Let's hope. Oh, seven. So he's gone. That's how fast combat goes. So he has no treasure and he has no gold. But one more chance closer to gaining a new skill. Wow. And I don't get to look at the second card. So these guys are just going to both get discarded face down. So you don't know what you could have seen or could have been. And that's just like anything. You two doors, you choose one to go down. Or you can go back out and try to go down the second one. Could be better, could be worse. Let's try this one this time. An arrow trap. Gain one poison token. Well, I'm going to press my luck back out of that room and go into this one. And it's going to be an ambush. So, let's see what the bad side of the ambush is. Draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their initial damage and the dungeon level plus four to their health. All right, so it's going to pop. Initial damage is three. The, add the dungeon level is four. I think that's just automatic. I rolled the first time, didn't I, to see what they did. Initial damage. I think it's four. I'm going to take four damage. One, two, three, four. Let's see what else he says. Initial damage and counter strikes both steal a blessing. Well, fortunately, I don't have a blessing. So he gets seven plus one is eight. And this one said add the dungeon level plus four. So he'll be at 12. Maxed out at 12. He's got two loot. And when he initially damaged me and counter-strikes me, so it, it seems like the initial damage is not a physical roll. It's just what's on his card. I'll have to check on that. And if you know, leave a comment and let me know. <clears throat> so, we're resolving this ambush. I thought I had him, but he got me. So, I took initial damage. I'm going to have to spend three of these energy, and you see how fast the energy goes away, to roll and see if I can take the wraith out. Uh, that's not looking good. That is six points. That is half the life on this guy. So he is at six, but now he is about to strike back, counter strike. I have no blessings to steal, but he's got three plus two, five points of damage. This is getting really close to death, three, four, five, because I have one poison counter and I have three health left. So I need to take him out on this turn and look at my energy. It's running down to nothing. This half orc was ill prepared. So I'm gonna roll all three. I've got to survive, that's the whole point. And 10 points. Six needed, the wraith is gone. Nice. So that is my third thing. First I'm gonna collect a potion and a loot. The potion is an energy potion. 
And look at this, some scale armor. Subtract two from initial damage and counter strikes. Cannot use the conceal or shadow skill, which I haven't. So it's scale mail. It weighs three, four, five, six of my 11. So I'm good. I'm going to put that on right away. And um, let's go ahead and use this energy potion. Discard it to gain two energy. That'll give me some more fight power. But I need to find a way to get rid of this. Now, I have three monsters I could go up in an agility skill. So let's take a look at them and see if that's something we want to do. I'm going to move beyond the mind. There's one. Dodge. Gain one less poison damage from the arrow trap. That well, seems pretty specific. There's conceal. I can't use it because of that. Conceal or shadow. There's shadow. I can't use that because of my armor. Archery. When using a bow, you may reroll all the results of one. Well, that's cool, but I'm not an archery guy. But that so far, that's my only choice. Brawn, 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 mind, brawn, mind, agility, martial arts. What's this? You do not need a hand weapon to roll dice in combat. Your bare fist attacks deal two damage instead of one. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, that skill stacks up with the other. Let's go ahead and take that one. There it is. All right. So we're going to go ahead and burn these three, turn them over. Now what I've done is fought a undead and a frost and a fire. So right now it's a tie as to which boss I'll see. My health is very low. Ah, two more doors. Got to make my way through. Oh, and the theme on this I had mentioned, really unique. This is an aged adventurer. This dude's a veteran. He's been around a long time. And this is his final crawl. He wants to go in and basically gain the treasure he needs to retire and live out the rest of his days without having to ever adventure again or die trying. And so I found that that's really, really cool. Sounds like me running through the dungeon. All right. So I will pull this one up and I found a campsite. So this says I can cook by spending one ration to gain three energy, or I can search to gain a ration, or I can rest by spending a ration to gain two health and lose a poison. I don't have a ration, so that looks like what I'm going to have to do is search and find a ration, because if I come to the end of this, I'm going to lose three health, I'm going to die. And maybe I'll come across and hit something that allows me to take that poison away, because we're getting thin here on level one. I've got six cards left, so three more choices. So let's take this and this. This time, let's take the one on the right. And it is a mushroom grove. Uh, the top one is gain one ration. If this had been the second, I would have gained two. Look at that. I'm getting to gain another ration. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I don't know what that is, but you go to the mushroom grove. You get mushrooms. All right. We got these guys. Let's go to the right or the left. I'm going left. Boom. It is a merchant. Okay. Um, draw loot and potion cards based on the dungeon level you are on to form the shop. All right. And then the shop, I get to spend money. And you can sell. A merchant will buy items that you have for one gold each. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the merchant. So we have a loot in the shop. It's a mimic. I wonder how that happens. You may avoid this conflict. I think that if I'm, it's a mimic. I ran into a mimic and a spark bomb. You may spend a ration 
to avoid this conflict. I'm going to spend it, and we're going to lose the Mimic. Sorry, dude, but that was a bad... You had some bad goods. Well, you got the Spark Bomb. You can spend one gold, and this will allow you to discard this card to deal 2 die 6 damage, plus 5 damage to foes weak versus fire. You know, it's one gold. Let's buy it. One gold, it's our only gold, but now we have this one, six. We have six total. I'm wondering when I picked that up. Was I with the flying snake? Nope, it was the wraith. Okay, I was thinking I could have avoided some of that damage, but it was too late. All right, so the merchant, did he help? You know, not as much as I wanted him to. And now we're at this last room. So I've already hit a clearing and got a plot. When this is done, we will resolve a plot card. And then we'll move on to level two of the dungeon, increasing the enemy strength. I don't have a lot of stuff, but uh, here we go. Let's take this one. It is an ambush. So... The agony of choosing, do I flip this last card and maybe get something really worse or really bad? Or do I take this ambush, the last one, maybe gain some loot? This is a beneficial, so I'm going to go ahead and take that instead of pressing into something that wouldn't be. And I can't look at it. So let's see what we find. We find a cave troll. He has eight health. Plus, the level, so he's at 9 health. And no initial damage because it was an ambush. So we add the dungeon level to their health, you draw the enemy, and ignore their initial damage. Good. Good, good, good. And this one says, you may avoid this conflict by spending 3 gold. By paying him off, I got no money. I got to fight him. So it's a 9. I don't have much energy, so let's use this Spark Bomb. Look at this. He is weak to fire because he's a, a cave troll. So it says, I can discard this card to deal 2 die 6 damage and plus 5 if the foe is weak to fire. I need to use it. I've got to survive. Let's see what we get. 7 plus 5 is 12. We take him out with this Spark Bomb. The cave troll burns up. He can't regenerate because he is burned alive. Nice. And this guy gives you a piece of gold. It's written on the bottom of the card. And you get two treasures, a loot, and a potion. Well, we know we're beyond a mimic. What do we got? We've got a cinder blade and a potion. Let's take a look at these guys and see what we got. Cinder Blade, attack results of 6, deal 7 damage, plus 3 to the sum of your attack rolls versus enemy weak to fire. And an energy potion, you may discard this card to gain 2 energy. Well, I will put the Cinder Blade in my primary hand. We're at 3, I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7. And then we'll use this, putting us to 8. We're still under 11 encumbrance. Let's go ahead and drink this energy potion and gain a couple of energies back so that we can start swinging the cinder blade. We have made it through level one of the dungeon. So I have to spend a ration or I'm going to uh, take three damage. And now we move on to level two. And we're shuffling all this up. We have to resolve a plot. This could be my demise right here. It's not going to put us in front of the bosses. I'll shuffle this up just a little bit more. Just because. And let's see what the plot says. The plot says, The Pig Man. You're drawn to the sounds of a whimpering animal. You're amazed to find a very small pig-like creature with a human likeness caught in a snare trap. Will you release the pig-man? 
The frightened creature looks confused. When you release it, it pauses for a moment and then takes off on two feet. Move up one on the morality track. Or, carve up the pigman. Your belly rumbles at the sight of the pigman, and you get to work preparing a fire. Move down one on the morality track, but gain three energy. Well, and it has one eyeball on it, so it's going to put us at four out of ten. I'm not going to carve up the little guy. He's too cute. So let's see if we can get ourselves closer to zero on this morality. So we're at four. That's one round, and uh, I'm barely alive. Um, so I've sort of explained how it works. Let me just start flipping cards and see if I die. Here we go. I got two. Let's flip. It's the merchant. I do have... Now we're at level two, so I get a choice between two loot and a potion, and I could sell things. So we'll get two loot and a potion. This is going to go away. I'll resolve the merchant. Let's see what we got. We got, looks like another spark bomb. A keepsake. While the keepsake is in your inventory, you gain two morality. Okay. And a lamp. Once per dungeon level, you may reveal both dungeon cards and choose one. Well, I've only got one gold. I think what I have to do is tell the guy, sorry, but I can't buy anything today. I'm not going to sell that, but I'm going to spend the one gold I have to buy another spark bomb. It got me out of a tough situation once. So three, six, seven, eight of 11. I'm still doing good. Thank you, Mr. Merchant, for coming early. All right, let's pull another set. Left or right, let's go left. It is a skirmish. I want to press my luck and see what's next. It is an ambush, not good. So, draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level to their initial damage and then add the dungeon level plus four to their health. So he pops up, his initial damage is three, and I'm dead. So I'm glad we kept going because you would have never known what happened. I died. But wait, scale armor says subtract two from initial damage and counter strikes. So I only actually take one. I am barely alive. I'm talking barely alive. Um, wow. So he has 7, 8, 12. He has 12 health. Do I have enough energy to take him out? Let's see. 1, 2, 3. Let's spend 3. Let's roll the dice. Or do I use the spark bomb? Two die six. Is he weak to fire? He is not. He's weak to frost. I'm going to save my spark bomb. He's not undead and he's not fire. He's frost. That's too bad. So let's see what happens. Four, five, six, seven. Putting him to five. This is probably the end of it unless Mr. Cool rolls a double. If he rolls a double, it's always a miss. Didn't happen. Four plus his three is seven. Now I'm dead. All health is gone. And I died. This is probably the most common turnout on this game is death. I made it two rooms into level two. And I am gone. I probably could have managed things a little bit better, but sometimes that's just how it turns out. The old adventurer met his fate, and he is swallowed up in a consuming mass, a gelatinous cube, and he will forever be crawled around through the halls of this dungeon, <laughs> his final fate. Anyway, folks, this was my first ever playing of this game. I've not added any adventure packs or anything. I think I'm probably going to use some more characters, read through some of the cards to see how they work, and get a better understanding on how to survive this thing. But, uh, wow. Pretty awesome. Uh, guess what? Let's look at this. 
attack results of 6, steal 7. I didn't do that. Plus 3 to the sum of your attack versus those on fire. Still wouldn't have been a weak to fire. He's not weak to fire. So I'm trying. I'm digging. But no. Anyway, this is the wizard. We're at the wizard's table. Wizard of Mo Games. Um, let me know what you think. And uh, I think I might even explore some of that 10 helm and 10 realm. Uh, but again, if you want to see some real pros playing this game um first of all go see uh gray gnome games and see jason glover's page um but look at uh, the dungeon dive and uh game night k-n-i-g-h-t those guys are the boss love you guys uh have a good evening we'll catch you next time we're out